What's up guys, I'm Gregory West and this video is all about singing loud, high, with power and fullness, not thinning and yanking that chest voice as high as that bad boy will go. But before we do that, check out my social medias here. All right, so belting has a history of getting a bad rap. Vocal coaches and some singers will tell you it's unhealthy to belt. You need to mix instead. The hallmark of SLS singing is don't pull chest, light and right. The other, the other concept that when you talk about replacing pulled up chest with pulled down mix. Mm -hmm. Well, number one, <clears throat> pulled up chest is... <laughs> A lot of people think full voice, chest voice. And so they'll yell to hit high notes. I remember going to my first bridge saying, ah, gets dull, it gets stuck out of the mouth. If I say, ah, I'm pulling up my chest voice. If you have to drive, if you have to push to go higher, ah, you're in trouble. I am here today to tell you that that's a bunch of bullshit. The people saying those things are just saying nonsense because one, they lack the evidence to support their claims that it's unhealthy or dangerous, and two, they can seldom successfully do the sounds themselves. The truth is that they just never learned how to do the sounds in a healthy way, and this is probably at least partially because their teachers told them it was bad and their teachers before them told them it was bad, so it just goes on and on. As someone that can belt, I'm gonna explain to you how to do it. But first, what is belting. Sadly, in the world of singing, the exact same words get used with different meanings, so people will say belting to describe different sounds. But here's what I think you think belting is. But now I got it. Alright, and how is this different from other types of sound? Well, we can probably rule out falsetto, head voice sounding stuff, right? But what about sounds like this? The one I can run to when I'm feeling down. Life is all good when you're around. Girl, nobody from the past is beating you right now. No, you. Don't 
It's warming up. Can you feel it, baby? It's warming up. Seems like you're ready for more, more, more. Let's just get still with naked. Woo! Woo! Versace on the floor. You should know. Now, I don't consider that belting, and those sounds are not what I'm going to be helping you with in this video. Okay, so what is belting? Belting has four aspects. They're like ingredients in a pie or something. Uh, a belting pie. Aspect one is that the vocal folds are vibrating with their entire mass, like this, as opposed to like this. They are also staying together for a longer period of time when they vibrate and they are closing very quickly after opening. So if my hands are going to be the vocal folds, um, they're sort of vibrating like this. And in other words, you have very strong closure with the vocal folds. What does that sound like? It sounds like this. A Aspect two, the acoustic registration, AKA the vowels. The registration you're using is open timbre or yell timbre, meaning that at least one harmonic has still not raised above the first formant. Okay, it sounds complicated, but basically the sound of your voice is open or spread sounding and not more closed or dark or narrowed or tall. When you analyze the resonance, it actually shows you what's going on. When we are belting, we have this going on. All right, guys, now I'm going to demonstrate the difference between the correct acoustic registration and the wrong acoustic registration. And we're gonna take a look at how they visually appear different in this software. Hey! 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 Ah! All right guys, so the difference between this example here and this example here is basically the correct acoustic registration and the incorrect and what you can see here in the first one is that this one is super strong especially when i went higher right here it, it got much darker and that means it got stronger and over here the reverse happened it actually got weaker and so this is essentially the wrong way and the right way so what's happening here is that in this one i'm in what's known as yell coupling or yell timbre and in this one right here i'm going into closed timbre and this is what i mean when i'm saying the sound gets more closed um, versus staying more open so basically what i'm saying is you can only belt certain vowel sound and e and u are off the table you don't need to understand the science to do it you just need to be able to hear the sounds and recognize the differences in the sound and aspect three the pitch needs to be high enough for it to be a belt. No one is calling this a belt, even though it meets the first two criteria. Hey, 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 hey. So where's the line for when the pitch becomes high enough for it to be belting? Well, I would say that generally at about an F4 for men and an A4 for women. I think this is something you can feel in your body. I would say it's the point at which you have to adjust your vocal tracks position in order to go higher without losing the openness to the sound, AKA the open timbre or yell timbre. So if I have aspect one and two going on and I keep going higher, if I don't want the sound to change to a mix, I'll have to adjust my vocal tract. And in the case of belting, that means opening my mouth more and getting a bit louder. Mixing is a result of not adjusting the vocal tract as you go up, which I talk about a lot in my video on Mix voice, the magic trio. <laughs> Belting is the result of adjusting the vocal tract as you go up. <laughs> now, this brings me to aspect four, which is higher breath pressure or support. If you don't understand that concept, then you can check it out here. If I'm going higher in pitch and I cross the pitch threshold where belting is supposed to be, but I back off the pressure, 
I will get this kind of fake belt. It's a lighter sounding thing and it's not really a belt. Hey! Now doing this also robs me of aspect one of belting, the correct vocal fold coordination, because in order to have a really strong adduction or vocal fold closure, my vocal folds need to resist a lot of air pressure. If you don't have the air pressure for belting, your vocal folds won't be doing what we need for belting. All right, so that's what belting is. It's technically a strategy or a way of singing higher notes, and it differs from other strategies or techniques. So how do you do it? Well, before we get to that, I have to address something really serious, guys. Why haven't you liked this video and subscribed to the channel? And if you've done that, then well, why aren't I getting more views? Hmm? I don't know. Anyways, if you can do these things, you're gonna do well with belting. Number one, find a really clear, loud, chesty quality with your voice. Number two, find the yell pocket as you ascend. And number three, twang. Let's start with number one. This is like your foundation for belting. It's like the springboard that you're gonna jump off of to get higher. In CVT terms, and you can check out my video on that if you haven't seen it yet, we really want a metallic sound, not neutral, and you want it to be very full. So we don't want this kind of a sound. Uh, 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 uh. Instead, we want these kinds of sound. Hey, hey, ah, hey, oh, e. This will allow us to achieve aspect one, by the way, which is correct vocal fold coordination. Don't let yourself get weak and airy as you ascend, like this. Okay, okay, okay. Now it's time for part two, the yell pocket. Remember aspect two to the definition of belting? the acoustic crap? Well, that's basically what this is. At a certain point in your range, you wanna take your voice to a more yelly or called quality. This is gonna be at different points for men and women, generally speaking. So we are gonna start nice and low in an open sound, like on an A or an O. A, O. This doesn't feel closed like an E or an O, right? E, O, A, E, A, E, A, E, O, O, O. It's open. And for ladies, you can try it right here. A, O. And so now we want to slide up into the yell pocket like this. A, A. Ladies, you'll be here. A. Now, if I don't enter the yell pocket, it could be because I was too open, like this. In sensation, the more open, brighter, lower sound feels more forward, like the vibration of the sound is here. And the yell pocket one feels like it's at the back of my throat behind my eyes. And to me, this also just feels like the vowel is closing slightly. You don't want it to be too open or too closed. We're aiming for the Goldilocks zone here, which is the yell pocket. Too closed would sound like a too open. A just right. A once you get into the yell pocket, you want to make sure you stay there. How? Well, you keep adjusting your vocal tract as you go up in pitch, and that keeps the sound from closing. If I start in the yell pocket and I keep the same vocal tract shape as I go up in pitch, I'm not going to get a belt. In order to belt, I must open my mouth more and more, and I need to keep going increasingly horizontal with my mouth shape, not vertical. So I basically call this technique progressive opening because the pitch goes up and you need to open up more and more. More space, more range. And by the way, this is why if you see really, really good singers, they're not afraid of opening their mouths because this is how you do it. It takes a lot of confidence to be able to open your mouth like 
but ultimately that's what you need to be able to do to get those high notes in a belt anyways. This is where the third aspect of belting comes into play, the pitch threshold. Now the pitch where the sound closes, unless I actively open more, is where it's gonna start to sound like and become a belt. A, 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 Now, the higher I go, the more I need to increase the breath pressure, which is aspect four of belting. If I don't do that, I won't be able to extend the range of my belt. It'll just thin out and go towards a lighter sound. A A belting takes a lot of energy and you can't be afraid of being hurt or cracking. You just got to go for it. All right. So now we have this kind of shouted sound, but wait a minute. How is this hey! supposed to result in something like this? Hey! 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 Delilah, Delilah, Delilah. Because aren't they both belting? Oh, you're smart. Basically, what we're gonna do is we're gonna transform our yelly sound into a brighter, more twang sound. In CVT terms, we're gonna go from overdrive to edge. Now, for twang, I want you to think about creating a brighter sound. You know how some radios will let you adjust the treble and the bass with their own respective dials? Well, imagine that twang is the treble dial and you're gonna crank that bad boy up. It helps to raise the larynx, raise the back of the tongue, and smile broadly. So we're basically gonna start our sound in the more shouted quality and then do these things in order to add twang and brightness. And this will allow us to belt even higher notes because basically that yelly sound that is overdrive and complete vocal technique, well, this sound has a pitch limit. So for both men and women, it doesn't go as high as the brighter one does. So it's really important that we learn how to transition from that heavy shouted quality to this brighter one. So let's try this first on a really low note where we aren't in the yell pocket. It should get brighter, nastier, louder, all good things. It shouldn't feel like you're squeezing the crap out of your throat. <laughs> it needs to be comfortable. So if we try to take this higher, we actually still want to go through the yell pocket. You don't want to go too open or too closed. A. 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 Now let's try starting in the yell pocket with the yellier one and adding twang. A. Ladies, you're gonna be. A. Now from here, we need to figure out how do we ascend in pitch and transition from that yellier, shoutier sound to the more twanged sound, because there's just no way that we can take the yelly sound to infinity. It has to twang more the higher we go, because we aren't gonna extend the belting range. If we don't, we're just going to mix like this. Hey! So for men, right around A4 is typically a pivotal note to start increasing twang. And by C sharp five, territory, you really need to start letting go of that yelly feeling entirely. So for my ladies, C5 is going to be a pivotal note where you need to add some twang and E flat five or so is going to be typically where you need to let go of the yelly feeling entirely. So as I go up in pitch, I'm going to enter the yell pocket, keep adjusting my vocal tract to extend that higher and right around A4, I'm going to introduce some of the twang into my voice. Hey, 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 hey. I'm a bit tired right now, physically and vocally, so that demonstration is a bit thinner and less coordinated than it could be. So the higher I go, the more that twang just takes over and I inevitably thin out more and more and lose the belt equality entirely. Now, keep in mind that I've been doing this for a while and I couldn't do it overnight. It was a lot of trial and error and refining things, but this is basically the information that I learned that led to me being able to belt, of course, with 
a lot of practice and some guidance. Some common mistakes that you might make while you try doing this are number one, not opening your mouth enough the higher you go. And I see this one constantly. <laughs> It turns out that, you know, a lot of singers aren't super comfortable opening their mouths really wide. So this might take some getting used to. The second thing is being afraid. Fear will seriously wreck you. Now, if you're afraid of being heard while doing this, then I strongly suggest that you find somewhere else you can practice it or suck it up because holding back isn't going to get you anywhere with belting. Number three is raising the larynx too much too early. You don't want to overdo the brightness and end up feeling really tight in your throat in the middle part of your range. Number four is not supporting properly. And what I mean is that you aren't generating your breath pressure in an appropriate, manageable, sustainable way. And again, you could check out my video. One of the ways you might miscoordinate your support is getting too tense in your core area. And as you go up in pitch, you just keep going tighter and tighter. And this might lead to very strong false fold approximation, which I like to call grandpa voice. Hey, yeah, my grandpa. On the flip side, you may be not tensing your core enough and you're way too relaxed making it difficult for you to find higher breath pressure levels needed for belting. So either you're working too hard or you're lazy. Now, this is a really condensed how-to video and me just saying what to do and demonstrating may not translate into you correctly doing it. And you might need some help and some guidance. I definitely did. If you feel you need some help, email me at voicelessonswithgreg at gmail.com and you'll be belting in no time. All right, guys, thanks for watching. If you liked the video, like the video. If you don't like the video, then still like the video. Leave your questions, suggestions, and other meaningful pros down in the comments below, and I will talk to you soon. Bye.